So this is a Sony ICF 2010. And I have it in kit form right now. Everything's basically disassembled from this unit. Everything's pulled out. There's the front panel and the speaker. The AM ferret rod antenna. A shield for the microprocessor and PLL board. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this one. Take a look at all the corrosion on this membrane panel right here on the keypad. Look at all that. And so this over here is what I'm having a problem with. Someone's tried to do a repair on this unit in the past. And so I'm going to pop up some pictures of the before. Before I clean this unit and show you what it looked like. Particularly concerned with this area right here. Where all those little plate throughs are. And then this area right here, which I'm going to zoom in on. Look at how black those plate throughs are. Okay, so right there in the center of the screen, you can see how black those plate throughs are. And even the one just above IC507 has got a bunch of green crusties. I'm worried that there's no continuity between the front and the back side of the board on this unit. And so one of the things that concerns me is where you see IC501 and IC502, if I flip this back over, Where all those plate throughs are, it's had corrosion leak through those plate throughs and underneath the main board right there. So looking back at this unit, someone has tried to do some repair right there in the center of the screen. Someone scraped that copper. And then down here at the bottom as well, someone has done a soldering hack right there. There's no continuity between that trace and the keypad pad. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the display off of this board. Right there. And give it a wash in the dishwasher. And see if I can get this corrosion off the board. And then I will do some continuity checks front to back and see if we're okay. Looking over at the main board right here, I don't see really many issues with the exception of this one bulged capacitor right there. So let's go ahead and do a quick ESR check on that one bulged capacitor and see what it looks like. So that capacitor lives right here between the common ground. Let's make sure we get zero ohms, and we do. And so I'm seeing 22 ohms on that capacitor. Now, both of these caps are 330 microfarads. And I think they're at either 10 or 16 volts. The other one I see 0.35. I'm very happy with 0.35 on a 330. But 22 ohms, no, not happy with that capacitor at all. Looking down into the case of the radio, someone has done a modification on this at one point where they added a super cap right across the battery terminals for the backup, the computer batteries. This is what keeps the microprocessor active. And if you look closely, they pinched the wire right there. So I'm sure it's going to be okay, but please, if you're going to do this, don't use solid wire. Use stranded wire. It's so much more flexible and allows you to route the wire so much easier. Let's take a look at the back of the radio also. So here's the back once again. Someone used solid copper wire instead of stranded. 
can see this one. I mean, they're they're just a nightmare to deal with. They solder that one up onto the antenna. There's the rod antenna that ex extends through the top of the radio. Even over here on the negative battery terminal. Once again, someone used solid copper wire. It's not forgiving. It can't flex repeatedly and it's not resilient. Please, if you can do a modification on this radio, use stranded wire only, please. So this one has had the Q303 FET protection added to it. And there is the transistor and look at the tab. It's really hard to see, but to my eyes, it looks like the tab is not even soldered. I did do a continuity check. It is good. This is where Sony recommends you add the protection, the dual diode, cathode to anode, anode to cathode, to prevent spikes from damaging this 2SK152-1 FET. Now the 2SK152-1 FETs are not available. I have found some dash twos, but I hear that their sensitivity is lower than the dash ones. So unfortunately, if you blow this thing out, you will not find a replacement FET for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip the display off this unit and I'm gonna run this in my dishwasher. Well, not this board obviously, but the keypad board and we'll see what it comes out like when it's done. All right, so I've got the board strategically situated up in the rack where Hopefully the ribbon cables won't get damaged by the spray arm. I do have the keypad, the membrane keypad, face down up here on the top rack. So not many dishes today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. And we'll grab a soap, put it in here. And we're gonna say pro wash with no heat, no high temp, anything like that. And we'll hit start. And we'll close the door and we'll get this thing running. Ready right now? Cathode the cathode. Pro 